So there's been a lot of stuff in the news lately about Mormons. So I thought we'd go and visit some actual Mormons because my only previous exposure to Mormons was when I worked at Disney World, all the Mormons that worked there were the friendliest people. Like they came right out of a Disney movie. I wanna know what uh, Mormonism is all about. So I'm gonna go get to the bottom of it. We're on a mission from God. What's that from? Blues Brothers, right? Nothing? All right. Hi, we're here at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And what that is, is the Mormon Church. So we're gonna go meet David and Kylie and learn all about Mormonism. So let's get out of here. This looks great. You look like, you both look like you're out of catalog. <laughs> it's just a that Sunday thing. I, I need a jacket. I need, I need some sort of sports coat. Go get it on the crew so that I can look nice. <laughs> you can have mine, do you want mine? I'm sure you we can well, wear mine. Okay. Yeah, that, well, let's get casual. do you want to put it on? All right, I'll put it on and then we'll, we can switch back if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What size are you? I'm like a 40 regular. This is, uh, that's exactly my size. All right, this you might, great. this might be your present. You can just keep this. Okay, now I'm, now, now I look good. You now, we get, now I'm the interviewer. <laughs> Parts of the Mormon faith, the beliefs that are different from other forms of Christianity. So we have the Book of Mormon, which is an additional scripture on top of the Bible, and it basically tells the story of what was happening in the Americas while what was happening in the Bible is happening. But that's where Joseph Smith comes in, right? The, the writings in the Book of Mormon are ancient, is in taking place in you know starting in 600 B.C. and you know coming till the birth of Christ, life and death of Christ, and then afterwards for a few hundred years. Um, Joseph Smith in the 1800s, uh, through guidance from, from God, was able to locate this ancient record and then through inspiration translate it to modern English. Joseph Smith was a polygamist, right? Mm -hmm. That's not part of your church now. Correct. Correct. Why is that and what is your take on polygamy? I know just as a woman, if my husband came to me and was like, I want to marry somebody else, I don't think I would like that very much. But I do believe that he was our prophet. And so I believe there was a reason for it at the time and that it served a purpose. Uh, are there elements of your faith that are difficult for you to accept as a woman, a career woman? I think that the role of the woman and the role of being a mother is the most important thing you could do. And I'm not an expert in this. This is strictly from personal experience that I've very recently had. I do really believe and think that there are very special spirits. And I think that to give a spirit the opportunity to have a body is one of the most beautiful things that you can give. One of our core beliefs is that before we were born here, we lived with God and that part of his plan is for us to be born here on earth, have a body, live a life, learn what we need to learn. So the, the more kids you have, the more Mormon spirits we, we have. This is again me, but you would just want every child to be born into an environment where they're loved and healthy and safe. Did you go on a mission? I did, yeah. I went and served a two-year mission in Brazil. The whole mission over there is to, to, to convert, right? Mm -hmm. My day-to-day -day was to go out and meet people and share what it was that I was teaching. Do you know how many people you converted while you were in Brazil? Um, I have a rough the idea. ballpark? <laughs> <laughs> I never kept uh, tally marks because they weren't tally marks to me, they were people. So if we, I could tell you the story of everybody that I talked to, to be honest with you, I've never sat down to total up the, the total like number. Like a rough ass. I'm not <laughs> he letting you He wants a number. He wants great. a number. That, 
That's great that you care about everyone as people, <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking numbers. Uh, you know, I think we're somewhere between less than 100, more than 20. You're an wide engineer spread. and there's wide a spread. pretty widespread, dude. Yeah. So you, you did a fair amount, let's say that. I did a lot of hard work, yeah. You, I hear, are a singer. Honestly, I've been singing my whole life. I went to school on a singing scholarship. And when I was deciding what I wanted to do as a career, I decided that it would be something I would always do on the side because ultimately I do want to be a mom and I want a job where I can be a mom and be at home and work from home if I need to. And I didn't want to have to work evenings and weekends and tour and do all of that. So I made a choice a long time ago. Be still my soul, thy God. There's people who sing in church who have like nice voices, and there's people who are like musically trained, and then there's Kylie. There are different wards of the church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the wards, and what is a ward? A ward is just a congregation. It's basically geographically based. It's like a neighborhood, and so you kind of pick a specific area, and you consider that your ward boundaries, and those people will go to a certain meeting house at a certain time. So we go to a, a specific ward designated for young single adults between the ages of 18 and 31. So why are they separated, do you think? I think it's more of a transition into college, and then it kind of becomes a, we want them to date and be together, and our social needs are different than a family's social needs would be. The, the singles ward, is that just like a giant hookup place? Uh, what does hookup mean? I don't know. <laughs> I've never done it myself, but I hear it's excellent. Just being in a big city like this, you can be a little lonely. And so when you get thrown into a ward with other people who are young and single and don't have other family obligations, you can get together and you can create sort of your own pseudo family units. You're technically a couple, so why are you in the singles ward? The mean of singles is like married or not married. It's yeah. not by Facebook rules, it's by yeah. Yeah. Right. marital. No, no, no. Okay. They still keep us here <laughs> Okay. until the deal is done. Is there something unique about you guys as a couple in that you're a little bit older? There's a lot of pressure to, to get married very early. Is it the same in, in your church? There is a huge focus on the family, so they do want you to get married and have kids, but it's an individual choice. I have to ask, what has taken so long with the nuptials? <laughs> I don't know what's taking so long. Together. It's a mutual thing, though. It's, it's, it I, does take two, usually. Yeah. You're planning on getting married at some point, though, right? Oh, did I just hit on something? <laughs> um, we talk about we it, We talk yeah. about it a lot, yeah. I think any couple who have dated nine months or more know enough about each other to know whether they can create a happy marriage. How many families do you think rush into marriage before they're ready? There are an awful lot of people who get married with the idea if it doesn't work out, why then we'll just move on. I mean, that's sort of a prevailing feeling now. We don't feel that way at all. Our feeling is you get married and then you work at it, a stable family is the most important unit of society. So every now and then uh, after church, since people you know, drive a certain ways, we like to get everybody together for a little social. And Because anytime you give an alliteration to something, it makes it uh, more marketable. We call it a linger longer. A so linger after church, longer. we're just going to hang out and have some food and meet some people. So we'd love it if you came by. I would love to come. Thank you so much for inviting me. Sure. Well, That's I where we're going to set up your date. Wait. Yeah. Oh, OK. All right. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to, Larissa, great to meet you. You arrange all the music for the church, right? That's my calling. Okay. So what advice do you have to all the single people? 
that are just wandering around like a deer in the headlights. Well, one advice is to be honest. But I'm trying to make myself seem attractive and desirable. <laughs> Tell me about dating. I know nothing about dating. It's all the friend zone. You and me are in the exact same boat. Tonight has to go well. We gotta... <laughs> So what kind of girl are you looking for? One that thinks I'm funny. Yeah. They'll laugh at my jokes. Not a single one you found? <laughs> <laughs> What's that book you got there? This is my journal. That's your journal yes. of all your private things that bit. I immediately asked about? A little bit. I just want to meet people. That's what we're doing. We're single guys meeting people. Circle back. I'll circle back and I'll let you know. So remember, I'm funny. You're, you're awesome. OK. I see pride. I see power. I see a badass Mormon who don't take no crap from nobody, right? You're gonna go out there, there you and you're gonna find your wife. Yes. This is what we're doing. That's the best pet talk I've ever heard. Should we just get married? I feel like we could maybe get married. All right. Eternity should be fun, huh? Eternity would be great. Great, awesome. We have the rest of eternity. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we're getting hitched. We're done. We're done. We did it. We did it, guys. Worked out. So it was really nice meeting Kylie and David, and uh, even though I know a lot about Mormonism now, I'm still very confused why he hasn't put a ring on it. I feel like they are just genuinely good people. I think that they might be the ones to set me up with my future wife, and I'm very excited about that. Soul Pancake, subscribe!